What's up everybody and this is Supreme Decisions and this is today's first episode of the Supreme Rant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring attention to some stories that are actually on my mind or things that have touched my heart and I feel I need to say something about whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. And on here, I'm not going to be very politically correct. I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm going to state some things that a lot of people may or may not like. But at the end of the day, we're open for discussion because I don't mind you not agreeing with me because that is actually how we all learn. Because we all agreed, yeah, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in right now. We don't allow ourselves to grow. But with that being said, today I want to talk about what I'm going to name the George Zimmerman experience. And the reason I bring that up is because we watched looks like seems like two or three years ago but it was many years ago um george zimmerman murdered trayvon martin and used the stand your ground law in florida to pretty much get sent home and also a lot of creative lawyering the reason i bring this up is because there was a young lady in all places atlanta georgia that has mirrored George Zimmerman and his attack on Trayvon Martin almost to the exact T. Except Hannah is not a man. Hannah is a 22-year-old Georgia woman. And Trayvon Martin, in this case, is Kenneth Herring, and he's 62 years old. Well, the story is, as I have come to learn, Hannah Payne decided that one day when she was out shopping, she had witnessed a car accident. And witnessing that accident, accident to Kenneth Herring had dro driven off from the scene of the accident. Well, in Georgia, unlike El Paso, unless there is major damage, you know, you got to, you know, in El Paso, there's not a whole bunch of damage you can drive off. Y'all exchange insurance information. In Georgia, you got to stay. You got to talk to somebody. Why? Because it's more revenue driven there. But either way, Kenneth drove off from the, from the scene. Hannah Payne had called 911. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory on this one also. Because George Zimmerman himself, he had witnessed Trayvon Martin coming through a path into his neighborhood. He noticed that Trayvon Martin wasn't a, an everyday regular that he exactly knew. So he called 911. Now, just like George Zimmerman, Hannah Payne called 911, and when Kenneth drove off, Hannah Payne proceeded to disobey. Yes, I use those words. Disobey the instructions of the 911 operator, just as George Zimmerman did. Hannah Payne was told not once, not twice, not three times. Just like George Zimmerman was told not once, not twice, not three times, but up to five to seven times not to follow that person. Why? Because they are not police officers. They are not trained individuals on how to engage with anyone. Guess what? Both of these jackasses followed these people. Both of these jackasses murdered someone. And what happened with Miss Payne after ignoring the 911 operator and also lying about ignoring the 911 operator, Kenneth pulls into a parking lot. He then is boxed in by Miss Hannah Payne. Because again, you know, it wasn't even Hannah's car that was damaged. Hannah had nothing to do with the situation other than the phone call. But Hannah felt like she wanted to be a superhero. Hannah wanted her name in the paper. Well, Hannah's gotten her name in the paper and all over the news. And Hannah decided she was going to get out of her conveyance with a pistol in hand and engage. Yeah, that sounds exactly like what happened to George Zimmerman. He got out of his car after following Trayvon Martin, after being told a multitude of times not to follow him 
do not engage don't get near him leave him alone police are coming you know all those good things same thing the exact same situation he gets out of his car he engages with Trayvon Hannah got out of her car with her pistol in hand just like George Zimmerman she engaged with Kenneth and just like Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman Hannah murdered Kenneth Herring I'm going to say that one more time Hannah murdered Kenneth Herring and then her statement was he killed himself I'm going to say that one more time because I'm pretty sure you didn't get it because I didn't get it when I first started because it defied the laws of physics for me. Because if I don't follow Kenneth, if I'm, not, if I'm Hannah and I don't follow Kenneth, Kenneth doesn't use my gun to quote unquote kill himself. Even if I follow Kenneth and I get out of my car to engage with Kenneth, which I've been told not to do. If I don't have my gun in hand, Kenneth can't kill himself. Now, let's say if I am scared, if I am nervous, I feel that Kenneth is a big, strong guy. Why in the fuck am I getting out of the car in the first goddamn beginning? Why am I actually sticking my nose into somebody else's business? Because at the end of the day, if there was an accident, yeah, that's what police are for. That's what they quote unquote supposed to do. They, they find the folks that commit crimes and decide that she was going to be a superhero again. So yeah, let's... Let me let me do that. I'm scared for my life and I got out of the car with a pistol after I was told not to follow somebody that had nothing to do with me. I interjected myself into a situation and now what kills me is the fact that Hannah Payne is now quote unquote the victim because she's in jail and she was given a very high bond. While given this high bond, she cried and wept and wept and wept and wept and wept and, wept. and on July 21st, the 911 call was played in court in front of not only Hannah, the victim, as she puts it, or wants to believe, but also in front of Mr. Herring's wife and other supporters in the area of Clayton County. And during that call, no one heard a victim. What they did hear was someone saying, I'm not following him, I'm not engaging with him. And then all of a sudden, Oh, here he is. I I found him. Oh my goodness. He has killed himself. But I'm the victim. Now, let, let me let me let me let me ease back a little bit because I wanna I wanna bring up something real quick. I did a show maybe a couple weeks back and I spoke about how I hate victims. Yeah, I actually use that word. I hate victims. And the reason being is because we're putting ourselves in a society where nobody wants to take responsibility for shit. Nobody wants to say, hey, I said that. Or, hey, I did that. And in this instance, Hannah did everything wrong but somehow she's the victim she actually considers what happened to her as somebody else's fault a man's life is gone that would not have been gone had you removed Hannah Payne from that situation a man's life is gone had Hannah Payne just followed the instructions of those that are actually halfway trained to tell people to mind your fucking business. The one thing I love about Drake, because I'm not a big Drake listener, I, you know, he cracks me up with some of the stuff he does and says, but I'm not a big Drake listener. But at the end of the day, the one thing I quote Drake on is the hardest thing about business is minding your own and right now those that don't mind their bi own business they are exercising their perceived entitlement and when you're looking at this because last week I did a video 
and I spoke about the most dangerous thing here in America. And the most dangerous thing here in America is perception. The reason I said that is because when you have someone that lacks the ability to accept responsibility for their actions and they accept the pussification of this nation and they think everything is somebody else's fault no matter who does it I'm going to say that one more time everything is somebody else's fault everything else is somebody else's responsibility it's not yours and only things that are done are done to you not by you it becomes dangerous and the biggest danger is people don't see anything wrong with that that's why it's dangerous